Yo, you already know it's probably about tomorrow, club about tomorrow, everything about tomorrow. Don't let your hoe go. I'm over here with Do Over Don't, you feel me? Shout out Purple World. Push me on, I cannot tell me who you know. Oh, she said she like my vibe, wanna chill some more. Look me in my eyes, tell me up from my. Where you tryna slide, when you tryna go? Oh, 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 oh. She wanna rock the gang, said she like how we dress. You better bring your friends, tell them to go get dressed. Let's get to it though. I think this is episode 62. I'm pretty sure it's episode 62. But we got a, a man of many talents, like on some Kanye ish. I gotta try not to swear for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> Swag. But Mr. Tomo, the man of many, many talents, many different endeavors, was good. I'm here. I'm cool. What's good, man? What's good, bro? You know, I was just at the chamber last night. Uh, I was fired as an event by Thrill. I was that? selling clothes. It was dope. Um, oh, I forgot I saw the fire for that. Yeah, my boy um, Calvin Klein Caterpillar. He won the event, so it was kind of like it's kind of like a head-to-head versus event with artists. Yeah, and shit. Max Moody was in it. Um, Maddie Owens. There was a couple other people in there too. Um, my boy Sane. It was fire. It was smooth vibe. No bullshit. I haven't got to one of those. Yeah, you gotta come out to the next one. I no bullshit, it. cause like it's gonna end at some point. Really? I think that one was the sixth one. So after the um, eighth one. All the winners of all eight, they're going to go against each other in, like, a Ooh. big battle. You feel me? That shit sounds dope. Yeah, it's really like an arc. It's like a, it's a series. It's like watching, like, a show in real time. No bullshit. It's crazy. Bro, not even two minutes and I broke the swearing, so screw it. But that, I, I've been seeing what they've been doing because they just came out of nowhere a couple months ago, right? Or were they doing stuff before? Because I, I, once I saw The Chamber, that's when I really started just mm-hmm. seeing. Yeah, Thrill's been doing events for, like, the past couple years. I want to say... I like, I met them probably around, like, 2018, and they started really doing events heavy around, like, 2019, 2020. Um, but, yeah, Chamber is a series that they started, and I feel like this has been their most successful event to, like, to see. No bullshit. I've that, seen their growth over the years that I know them, and it's crazy. It's um, run by Cam and Steph. Did it um, yeah. just start, or was the Chamber around for a couple of years? Nah, they just started doing the Chamber, like, um, like, this past year. It's a yeah. crazy concept. Crazy concept. Have you been to all of them or was that? Yeah, I have. I have. I was in the Damn. first one. So, like, Damn. I kind of, I was like, yeah, I got to pull it to all these. No bullshit. Damn. Who won yeah. the first one? The first one, Nate won it. Nate, Nate won it? Oh, yeah, did you yeah. have to go up against him? Um, Nah. Oh, I was I in the was bracket. I got out in the second round. I was Damn. in the bracket. Got out. Um, I got through the first round. In the second round, I lost to um, Exo. Exo Shaquem. Damn. Yeah. Damn. If you like had that. to go to Nate, uh, go against Nate, that would have been mad funny. Yeah, that facts. Mad funny. I gotta get him on one of those. I'm gonna just bring that up right now. Bad for the community. We'll get into that one of your first um, endeavors. But just having a group of creatives around you, mm-hmm. having like-minded people. How do you feel like that just plays into your overall creativity and just feedback? It helps. No bullshit. Like I like to surround myself by people that's doing the same thing I'm doing because it's only gonna inspire me to um, grow. You feel me? Like whenever I'm working on something. And I'll go, like, see what my bros is working on. I'm like, all right, damn, I need to double down on what I'm doing. You feel me? Um, I feel like that's the case with anything you're working on type shit. Like, it was like that when I was in college. I was surrounding myself around, like, a lot of creative people. And then, like, every day I was just cooking up. And people would come through, see what I'm working on. They'll get inspired. I'll come through, see what they're working on, get inspired, vice versa. Damn. What college did you go to? I went to UMass Lowell, and then I dropped out. You dropped yeah. out? How long you last? Um, two years. Damn. Yeah. Damn, you might be the the longest one. Actually, I felt am I bugging or did somebody drop out like literally their last semester? They told us that's a fool. I swear somebody did, and I was like, why did they? Yeah, just push through, no bullshit. Yeah. I feel like somebody did. Damn though, no, I feel like creatives. Anybody that is a creative and is just willing to give their one hundred percent, bro, none of them make it through college. It's mm. very very rare I ever hear of them making it through college. Yeah, et et is one of the first people. Yeah, facts. Et saw. graduated. Eve's graduated college too. Who? And Rob Eves and Rob, huh. uh, damn, bro. If you be graduating, no bullshit. Damn. Who it's else? Fire. Um. So everyone in Bad for the Community makes music, right? Um. Yeah. Everyone does. Yeah. Everyone facts. Does. Yeah. And there's four of y'all, right? Yeah. Y'all? And fun. then there's Dion. He's behind the camera. You don't really see him, but yeah. Shout out to Dion. How'd you guys come about just coming up with that concept? And when did you guys start? Um. So it was really like Rob came up with the idea to do a podcast. And then so the first episodes that we did, they were in his basement, and it was me, him, and Eves, and he was recording. And then we was looking back at the episodes. We was like, all right, these are smooth. Like, how can we um, build on this? And I was like, um, I know my bro Nate. I was working with Nate at Teen Empowerment at the time. Oh, so he wasn't part of it yet? Um, nah, yeah, yeah, facts. And then, so at the time, too, before that, I had a podcast with Nate called Rhyme and Reason. 
And Nate started that, and oh, I ended up joining that. you guys just that. bring that series? Yeah, back. they brought it back. No bullshit. Before, it was me, Nate, and our bro, Macho Munch. And we was just doing um, the audio podcast. So I was like, yeah, we have a space where we record the podcast. Um, y'all should slide through, and we could try to do an episode over there. And then from there, it's just like domino effect. No bullshit. It just kept going and going and it was going. It natural. Yeah. Damn. Damn. What, what year would you say that was? That was like 2020. Damn. That was 2020 when we first shot the, like, the demo episodes that never came out and shit. And then, like, I want to say towards the end of 2020 is when we started, like, dropping. Like, around near and, like, the beginning of 2021. Damn. That's yeah. fire. That's fire. It's crazy because I remember, I forget when I first, might have been the Lucius interview. Mm. That might have been how I found out about you guys. But I, I followed you guys after, I was following Museum first, I think. But you guys were on one of the first podcasts that I found from around here. For that's one of the first ones that yeah. I found from around. Museum's been doing it for a grip. No Museum bullshit. Man. I know He's that. the episode yeah. that came out this week, bro. Yeah, Shout out Noble. Shout yeah. out Noble. Noble. I remember seeing that shit when I was in high school and shit. I was like, that's fire. Yeah. Bro, I'm, I, that's literally like the way that I just found out about the history. Because mm-hmm. I was telling him, I'm like, bro, the name Museum fits what he has done perfectly. Exactly. Like it literally yeah. just is an encapsulation. That shit is a Bible on just Boston um, history. I'm just a music scene, bro. Fuck. But. I feel like the overall um, thing with your guys' podcast, the main podcast, not the little segment, like the one we were just talking about, uh, mm. it's purely entertainment. Like I was talking mm. about this with um, Adam because we were just talking about all the different platforms and how it's like crazy, how everyone just has their own agendas and reason that they're able to be consumed. But yeah. I feel like on an entertainment level, Adam has the comedy down, but just overall entertainment, you guys do that shit good of just... Keeping the mass scene, but also just a broader scene of shit. Like I saw one of your episodes, you were talking about John Bodega, or why did I say what the fuck? Jonathan Majors. Jonathan oh Majors, yeah, Jonathan the actor Majors. dude. Yeah, 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 facts. You guys be talking about the major shit going on in Hollywood and just all across the world, but you guys yeah. also mesh it with stuff from here. But it's just overall entertainment, and I rock with it because it's just it's unique. It's unique. Good looks, bro. I appreciate that. No problem. Yeah. Bro. No problem. What was your guys' goal when you guys were starting it? Um, or did you not really have anything in mind? It just sort of. I came. feel like you'd have to talk to um Rob about that more. Talk so you feel me? Like yeah, yeah. my bro came to me with a vision. I was fucking with the idea. I'm like, all right, let's run with this type of shit. Um, I would say that the goal is just to like get grow the podcast type yeah. shit. Like this year we created goals for this year, but like initially, like when we were starting it, we just wanted to um he wanted to start a podcast. I'm like, bet how can I support my bro in doing this and see it get up and running and off the ground? You feel me? And then, so I was pulling up doing the episodes around that time. Like, if you peep the early episodes, Eves aren't, um, Eves isn't in them because he was in college though. He was at UMass Amherst. So he was pulling up doing the episodes and he'll pull up like every so once in a while type shit. And then, so back in them days, like, like, I guess the goal was just to like keep growing it and like giving people a platform in the city, you feel me, to like people who might have a fan base that want to like share their thoughts that don't have like the necessary platform to do it. You feel me? So, yeah. Uh, that's the dopest thing That's the dopest thing Because the platforms really are What shapes the community Me and Noble were yeah. talking about that Because Except Unless you're getting on like No Jumper Or any of those random ass big pages uh-huh. All the local shit Is what's getting your music heard For the most part It's what's giving yeah. you Like you said That opportunity To just speak up And get your face card out there But Talking about your many talents How have you got Into a bunch of them Like the podcast It seems like you kind of Just got asked and dragged into it But You uh-huh. do the clothes You do the beats you make yeah. your own music. You do art. Mm. <laughs> I feel like there's stuff that I'm even forgetting because you just do so much bro, random stuff. I put, like you said oh, earlier, bro. DJ? Or am I tripping about bro, that? I did that for the first time the other day. So like, <laughs> I guess you can count that, but you can't really count that. Like, I, don't, I don't really DJ. I bro. DJ because I had a beat set, and I didn't want to just go up there and play beats off the laptop. I was like, everybody else is like, they had like SPs and um, NPCs and shit. I was like, I at least have to like do something for me. I can't just go up there and press play and shit. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> but... I really just got into like creating through um through music, no bullshit. When I was um I was I was like 14, 15, I started making music. I went to the Yeezus tour um oh. and seen Kanye. And like before that, like I used to rap, like we would rap, like um make beats on the table and shit, you feel me, like in school. But like I never like actually took the attempt to like take it serious. So then um I went to that show and I was like, Yeah, I'm out of cop a mic. Like that shit just inspired the fuck out of me. I was like seeing him do that, I was like I was like, anything's possible, no bullshit. Cause he had the garden like packed literally to the ceiling. Like I'm looking, I'm looking up, I'm seeing people all the way up here. I'm looking down, like it's just a sea of people. I'm like, yeah. So I caught the mic, and then from there, like I was making music for like about a about a year, and I would send my shit out to blogs and shit, and they would tell me that I needed to rap on like beats that are produced by people I know, cause like I was doing a lot of remixes and shit. So they was like, you need to produce or find a producer. So I was like, fuck it. I just took the time to learn how to make beats, 
And then from there, I just kept going, no bullshit. And like each um, different medium of art I learned just made me want to learn something else. Cause I'm like, all right, bet. Now I need cover arts for the shit I'm dropping. So it's like, I just learned how to do that. And then I'm like, I fuck with clothes. So I just started making clothes and shit. And then the clothes journey, like, I feel like the clothes and music journey, like, it's kind of like two different roles, no bullshit. I feel like you're known for both just yeah, as much around It is. Here, it's though, crazy. Bro. I yeah. feel like it's certain people that know me just for clothes, certain people that know me just for music, and then certain okay. people that know me for both. And there's people so that know cool. you for the podcast, I feel like. Yeah, too. facts. Yeah. Literally. But I feel like the clothes yeah. the clothes and the artistry, people know you more for just those two things, I feel like. Even more yeah. The podcast. But it's crazy because I, I forget. I think I don't want to say it was the clothes. I I think one of them I knew you did for a while, and then mm-hmm. I found out about the other one and had no idea that you did that. Yeah. Like I thought it was two. It was probably the clothes because I thought it was two different people. So, yeah, that's far. I try to keep it like that too. No bullshit. Like as far as my my clothes page, I don't show my face on there as much. Yeah. Like I let the um the mascot, the goblin. I let that take the forefront because I feel like that's more recognizable and that's cool, and it makes it like more of like a, um. A branding thing Like that could live on forever You feel me Like no matter who I decide to give it to If I give it to my children Or if I give it to somebody In my family You feel me Like they could keep Putting that um, mask on Everything and it'll just keep going And like the music shit I do it because I'm passionate about it I've been making music for a grip Since I Like it's about to be 10 years almost I would turn 25 in November So it's like But yeah I started dropping music Like 2019 So I feel like that's when I started like Taking it like serious For like dropping all platforms And then so it's just been a beautiful journey, no bullshit. And I feel like I'm gonna just keep learning, doing um like different mediums and shit. Yeah. It's crazy diving into multiple things. You feel like it's better because I've been asking anybody that dives into multiple things this question to put everything under one umbrella or to have it on multiple pages. Like, say you have mm-hmm. somebody that they're an artist right now and they're just an artist, but they're on a podcast. They're ha- they have a clothing brand. They make yeah. beats too. You see people that make literally pages for everything. What do you think is better? Um, I feel like it depends on what your what your goal and your intention is. For a grip, I was um in like organization factor too, cause for a grip, I was selling clothes just off my main page. Like when I, cause I started really making clothes like around like 2020. Before then, I had like got t-shirts printed and shit, but I didn't get like hands on with it until like 2020 when I, I'm making shit, I'm embroidering shit myself. And then from then, I was like selling clothes off my um story and then like on Snapchat and shit too. And then it just became overwhelming because I had to, like, separate too many different DMs. Like, certain people's, like, DMing me for clothes. I'm like, all right, bet. I need to just make a whole separate page yeah. for this shit. So then I did that. But, like, now, like, if I'm posting any of my other art shit, I'm just posting on my main page because I feel like I'm the main brand. But I feel like it depends. I feel like everybody's different. No bullshit. Like, if you're an artist and you're creating, like, say you're an artist and photographer or something, like, you make music and you do photography, you should keep it all in one space because I feel like those two things align. But, like, if you're selling a product, you should separate it yeah. because it's just like a business factor. It's way easier to sort through like those messages. But if it's just from a creative standpoint, then you should just keep everything together. Cause if you're an artist, you just, you create, it doesn't matter if you um do music or you dance. Like if you do both, just post that shit all on your main page. But if you need to do business under that page, you should separate it so that it's like, you get able to easily like separate the um, two uh, things. Yeah. What would your advice be? Cause a lot of people, they'll do shit like that where they do something else but they're too scared to put it out there because they're too scared to mix and match, match brands. What's your advice to them? Um, I don't know. Nigga, don't be scared. No bullshit. <laughs> like, just put that shit out. For real, for real. Because, like, at the end of the day, I feel like the more, like, you got to have um quality control, too. But, like, once you're satisfied with a product or you could look at a product and be like, wow, this is kind of cool. Like, I feel like you should put it out. Because at the same time, too, people like that growth factor of just seeing you grow over the years and, like, see what you become. But, like, there does need to be some type of quality control. Don't put out every single thing yeah. you create, you feel me? But the certain shit where it's, like, you just kind of iffy on it, put it out. Because people might fuck with it, you know? And I feel like people, like, you are saying, like, if they're too scared to, like, let people know that they do something else. Yeah. I understand that because um, it may be, it's like a, for me, at least, it's a respect thing. Like, how you ask me if I DJ? I wouldn't say I DJ because I feel like it's a respect thing. Like, I didn't actually, like, take time to learn that craft and shit. For a long time when I was making clothes, I didn't consider myself a designer. And then eventually just after doing it for some time and, like, actually like working on pieces and, like, working on pieces for other people, too, I was like, yeah, I could call myself a designer. But for a grip, I was like, I'm not really a designer. I just I just print on T-shirts and dye shit, you feel me? But it's, like, to claim that title, like, means that you actually, like, studied the craft, you put your time in, you feel me, and you worked at it. So I feel like it's it might be that for other people. Sometimes people might just be shy, no bullshit. 
What's good, y'all? Thank y'all for tuning in the Purple World. Just a reminder, we got a fresh studio over here. If you guys want to book a studio session, our rates start at $50 an hour with an engineer, $25 an hour with no engineer. Rates do vary depending on which engineer you choose. You can book a session by heading over to the Book Now button in our Instagram bio and book through Square. You can shoot us a DM to figure out what time slot you want as well as which engineer you want to work with. As a test to see who our loyal viewers are and see who's really rocking with us, if you made it through this whole ad, you could head over to our Square website and you could put code POD10 and that's gonna give you 10% off your session. One time use though, you are not able to use that again. So use a while. Back to the episode. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on the whole um, fast fashion? Like people that just get in the making clothes for the wrong reason, they just wanna make a quick buck. There's not yeah. really any thought that goes into it. I feel like everybody that makes clothes, there's different purposes. Like when I'm the way I make clothes for do over don't wouldn't be the way that I make clothes if I had my own brand because yeah. it's oh, overall, you know what I mean. By it's that. merch. It's yeah, the, it's um, like push merch. The brand. It's merch. Yeah. It's not like the type of clothes you're dropping. I wouldn't yeah. consider that merch. I wouldn't consider that merch. I would just yeah. I don't even know what to classify it as, but you know what I mean. It's a step up, yeah. major step up from that. There's a lot more thought that goes into it. Um, See, yeah. But people that they literally just You know what I mean by the fast fashion Like there's yeah. like a little trend They'll make some shit that fits in perfect with that trend They'll make a quick bag off of it And then just keep doing that over and over again And mm -hmm. there's just no thought, no purpose into it Hey, this is the camera right here, right? Yeah. Yo, stop doing that No bullshit, fast fashion is whack And y'all are killing the earth No bullshit Because a lot of the times too, like the clothes like they're putting out is like cheap And then, so it's like they end up with a lot of clothes and either have to throw it away or give it away. And so a lot of the times now they're printing on polyester and that shit is like bad for the environment. Um, oh, I should not touch I this. I didn't even know like, that. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Was squeak. you can move it if you need to, but it will squeak a little bit. Um, But yeah, bro, I don't fuck with the fast fashion shit because it's just like, it's, it's bad. I feel like because things are so accessible now, everybody wants to like try their hand at something. Like they go on TikTok and be like, you'll see like 10 different ads. How to start a brand with like $30. Yeah, and it's uh -huh. like, nah, bro, like. I actually take time to study something and like understand why you want to do it and if you actually want to do it. You feel me? I feel like it's cool to like try and experiment with it, but like don't just put it out just to make some bread. You feel me? Like yeah. actually like make like the clothes that you want to put out. I feel like a lot of people that do that they don't even like the clothes that they're making. You know, and I feel like that's a big part of it. Literally, I hate whenever I hear that somebody makes something just for the purpose of making bread and they won't even rock it themselves. Yeah, like, there's no thought put into it. Yeah, like you could you could. If you're in a position to make a brand or you're making a brand and that's all that you're doing, it's understandable occasionally to do something that you're just trying to make bread as long as it's something that you like and you fuck with, I feel like. But the people that literally make brands just for that purpose just need yeah. to stop, bro. I, I forget what me, me and Lucius, when we were talking about this, we oh, we were talking about too how just the thing that sucks about clothes and just fashion in general, mm -hmm. you have to find, not sucks, it's good for the people that actually dress because you have to find your own style so much because stuff comes out and then it just becomes a mega trend and the whole entire world is wearing it. It's like mm -hmm. you can't even have pieces that are timeless anymore almost. And the second anybody wears some shit and it's hot, you see like LeBron or whatever influencer wear it, yeah. it's a wrap. Everybody in the world is wearing that. How do you feel about that whole everybody dick riding basically on whatever the new trend is? I wouldn't even say it's dick riding, no bullshit. I feel like it isn't even dick riding, but you know what I mean. It's it, it's dick riding to an extent because I feel like if you only wear it because you seen that person have it on, then yeah, it's dick riding. Yeah. Like sometimes you might see something, you might be like, "Yo, this is nice." You feel me? Like how can I um like wear this? How can I rock this? But it is that case. Like a lot of the times, like there's like whole like um, what's the? There's like Pinterest sites and shit dedicated to finding like, oh, this person wears this piece. This yeah, costs as yeah, much. Like bro. people could like replicate these fits. And you see, like, people got, like, being celebrity lookalikes and shit. It's weird. I feel like a lot of that's due to just, like, clout for real. No bullshit. A lot of people, like, see something somebody's wearing and, like, a lot of people like this person. So maybe I should wear it, too. So a lot of people like me. And, I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Uh, the shiesties were the worst. Even though I ended yeah. up making shiesties. And that was, that was our most sold merch thing ever. It was purple. Y'all had the no, purple. No, we like, had the, the black ones. It had, like, a purple heart right here. And then I had a face mm. tattoo that said do over don't. And then um, I had the ma the mouth right here. Mm. Probably see E.T. Shout out E.T. He wears that shit everywhere. I, I see him post pictures and that shit all the time. You might have seen him wearing it. But the shices are like the perfect example of that, bro. Literally yeah. everybody in their mother wore it. The funniest shit. Shout out to these kids. I got sent from Sully uh, a picture of middle schoolers from Norwood. Like mm. these two little ass kids, bro, rocking the fucking DOD shices at school. 
But it's I was crazy. just like, damn, it's crazy how everybody just wish. Yeah, they ran out to the ground. And, like, now there's no excuse because it's like they lifted the mask mandates and shit. Yeah, like, people are just man. wearing them because it's like, yeah, nah, take that off. You know you're sweating. Yeah. yeah. Whenever I see people wearing shicees now, I'm just, I'm just sigh. Literal sigh. Literal yeah. sigh, bro. But getting into the producing a little bit. Yeah, your mm. artist name too is probably by Tomo. Yeah, facts. This is a question I love having with people. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you had the love for the like rapping and mm -hmm. making your own bars first. But if you had to pick one or the other that you wanted to be known for, what would it be? Because I feel like you dabble mm. in both an equal amount. Because you'd be producing shit I didn't even know. I had um Ken Frank and Super in here the other day. Yeah, they were like, yeah, they're like, I've, they're like, I've mad shit with Tomo. Tomo's the next episode. Yeah, I was just in the studio with them, um, like, yeah, a little while ago. We was cooking yeah. some stuff. But yeah, I feel like I would pick, um, I'll probably pick producing. Really? I feel like, yeah, because yeah. I feel like, um, I don't know. That's a hard question, bro. It depends, though. Certain months, I'll be like, I just want to rap. Like, I feel like yeah. for the past, like, three, four months, I've just been rapping a lot. I haven't really been making that much, um, many beats. But it depends. I would pick producing because I feel like you could feel way more emotion through just like music. You know I mean through solid music, uh, like, and I feel like I could I would still be able to tell my story without using any words. You know, hmm. like I could still do that through a beat and through sounds and through sonics. You know what I mean? I could like let people know what I'm going through and do that, um, and build like a story through my beats. I've done beat tapes and shit before where it's like kind of like yeah, a movie for your that. ears. You feel me? So. Yeah, you gotta check it out. Um, this is one called Perfect Blue. That's probably like one of my favorite ones that I released. But it's kinda like I'll create it so it's kinda like has a story within the beats, you feel me? And like with that, I feel like rapping, rapping is cool if you like how I put this. Like rapping is cool, but Alright, so what let me see, how do I put this, bro? Like it's it's one genre in particular. If I produce, I could produce within any genre. You feel me? So, if maybe if I was like a multiple um multiple genre artist, like maybe I would choose like just like vocals. But like I don't know. I feel like with the producing, like I could do way more than just like um just using my words and rapping. You feel me? Uh, what is you calling me real quick? Oh, shit. I'm gonna take this lady in the bullshit. But yeah. Bad. Um. What what are some of your favorite artists you worked with on the production side? Um, and who was the first artist you made beats for? The first artist I made beats for was my bro Rocker. Yeah, shout out my bro Rocker. He don't even rap no more. Damn. But yeah, facts. It always be like that. The first people end up just not doing shit anymore. Yeah, it facts. Was he was right there when I was learning how to make beats. No bullshit. Damn, Me bro. and him, we learned how to make beats around at like the same time. He was working on machine, and I was working at FL Studio. Damn. So that was cool. Um, yeah. Um, my favorite person I've worked with producing. Top I'll probably three. have to say, um, shit, either my bro Malari or Crue, for real, for real, because I feel like when we lock in, like, we just sit there and create, and we just cook up mad stuff, you know, um, a lot of the times, like, I'll be in there, I'll be making a beat from scratch, and then, like, he'll just sit down, by the time I'm done with the beat, he already got the song written, you feel me, and we just ready to go, and then it's like, if I fuck with it enough, I'll hop on it there, and then we just have, like, fire shit, like, the um, whole KLBK Radio Volume 4 that we just dropped um, a couple months ago, that's how a lot of them songs was cooked up. Like, we just be in there. I'll either play through some beats or I'll cook up some beats right there. And then, like, we just get going. I feel like right now I'm into a space where I'm starting to produce for people more. I feel like a lot of the time I was producing for people within my camp. Like, within a, um, I have a collective called KLBK. So I was working with a lot of those I people. Ask you, what is KLBK? KLBK. You feel me? <laughs> It's a legendary group. It's, it's, it's the world's best kept secret. You feel me? But yeah, facts. It's a collective of artists. Um, it's around like 11, 12 artists in there. Um, uh, rappers, producers. What the hell? You feel me? Um, just uh, clothing artists. You feel me? Photography, all that. How did I not know this? But yeah. How did I not know that? Yeah, because we low key. You feel me? We low key. We I'd pop out when it's time. Bro, I'd be forgetting too. You do photography. Yeah. That's another one of the big ones. Yeah, I feel like with the photography, like, it's more of a hobby. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I could do photography, but I haven't really, like, stepped into a role where it's like, all right, I'm going to book shoots or people could book me for shoots. Like, it's more so I'll just walk around. Like, I have my camera um, with me right now. I was going to take some flicks when we um, got here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, photography, I just kind of, like, shoot it as a hobby. Yeah. And it's, like, it's fun. I don't want to take the fun out of it. Because I feel like some uh -huh. certain times, I don't know. I like being an artist, but certain times, like, certain parts of it will take the fun out of it. Like, everything outside of the creative part, you feel me? When it comes to, like, not even necessarily the business part, 
unless you consider promotion the, the business part as well uh, but like promotion like all that shit like it takes the fun out of it yeah no it definitely does once it, once you're making money off of anything that was just a hobby before mm-hmm. and it starts to become some sort of income that you rely on it just kills it not completely but it just it doesn't feel the same like mm-hmm. it still feels good but at the same time it just will never ever feel the same so it's good to have those couple things that you just keep like oh i'm never gonna make this a business thing this is gonna be something that's just for myself I'll post it when I want. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. sit here looking for people to pay me for shoots. But I feel you. Yeah. I always be seeing um, people just post pictures. <laughs> and then whenever they have tagged, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I didn't know Tomo took pictures. Yeah, facts. <laughs> I didn't know Tomo took pictures. Sometimes you might catch me out with the camera and shit. I'll be shooting film, too. Shout out my bro Eves. He put me on with the film and I shit. I saw the um, picture, the Evelyn El- picture. Yeah. That shit was fire. That shit was fire. Yeah, I got something crazy cooking with him um, with this flick that we're working on. So really? it's, about to, it's about to come out soon. Yeah, you're going to see it. Shh. Yeah, facts, yeah. Uh, do you develop the film yourself? Nah. You I want to learn to eventually, but not yet. I'll be going to Color Tech. It's uh, like, um, it's right near South Station. So I'll be over there. I actually started messing with um, Dorian recently, too, to um, develop some shit. Oh, he developed film, too? Yeah, That's facts. Fine. He develops. You feel me? If you need some film developed, go hit up Dorian. You feel me? Shout out everybody. Fire. Shout, out, yeah, Midas. shout out Midas. Yeah, facts. All them. This is fire. Shout out CJ. CJ, you need to answer my text message still about that interview, even though I forgot to hit you up again. <laughs> Damn, CJ. Yeah, he be going crazy on the clothes, too. No bullshit. Uh, he be, bro, the, the fashion scene over here is fire. Like, what you're doing, CJ, and mm. then you got Lucius. You got a bunch of different people that are just doing stuff. Yeah. Got a bunch of people. Shout out the Reels, too, bro. I got to get no Chris bullshit. back on one. Shout out McBoston, too. Um, Shout out my nigga Dawson. Who are your, who's your favorite designer? Um, me in the state. <laughs> Besides you, I've right. always said you were his favorite. Oh, that's fine. He said, he said me, and then he was like Tomo, right after. You I'll probably me. say no bullshit. Um, I'll say either Dawson or Tyler Jeans. Like mm-hmm. they be snapping. Like I'll see like just like new, just new stuff from them. No bullshit. Damn. Yeah, I just want to see more clothes out. I feel like I don't know. They be putting out a lot of stuff. I want to see more. I need to, like, deck my closet out. It was just, like, <laughs> for me, it's just, like, mad drip. That'd be the worst when you have a dope-ass brand, but then they drop every couple months. Yeah. And then you just can't get more pieces, and you're just stuck for, like, three to six months without getting something. Yeah. But if you had to pick one or the other, this is another one or the other. Mm-hmm. Music or the clothes? Music, most definitely. No bullshit. Music, not yeah. even a question? Yeah, not even a question, bro. Yeah. I, li- I like making clothes because I like clothes. But I feel like... It gets overwhelming at times, like having to make clothes for everybody. Like, if I gotta just make clothes for myself, I probably would. No bullshit. Uh, Cause I just like I like getting fleece, so I like making stuff that nobody else has to. But um, the clothes, I feel like it's cool. It's cool. I really like it, and I like seeing people in my clothes. But music, I'm way more passionate about. Like, I I could sit down in my I have an office now, so I be in there making clothes and shit. So I could sit down in my office and I'll make clothes. And I'll be burnt out. I can sit in the studio for probably like three days and I won't get burnt out. You feel me? I'll be ready to like, let's cook up, let's cook up. You feel me? Whether it's beats or I'm making songs or I'm doing whatever, you feel me? Like, clothes, it's like tiring. It's way more physical effort and shit, you know? Music, it's like, it's more of a feeling thing. And I feel like a creativity thing. And clothes has like a, like a way higher learning curve, you feel me? And it's like an actual craft. It's a craft to it. Music is a craft too, but it's like a way more, it's a physical hands on craft yeah. than music is, you know? Yeah. Uh, that makes sense, a thousand percent. That makes sense, a thousand percent. What's your biggest pet peeve when it comes to making clothes? Um, number one thing you hate about it. Biggest pet peeve when it comes to making clothes, like the the creation process or the overall thing. Just overall create. It could be the creation. It could be the marketing. When people hit you up, like, yo, bro, I need a hoodie, bro. This is fire, bro. You feel me? And I'd be like, bet. You feel me? I tell them. I tell them, like, yeah, let's let's set it up. Just ghost. People Those, do that all the time. Yeah, facts. Or, or people will see me, like, be like, yo, bro, I need to cop some stuff, bro. You feel me? I'll be like, all right, I'm vending this Saturday. Ghost. Bro. You feel me? You don't got to tell me you're going to cop something. Just tell me it's fire. You feel me? That's smooth. But don't set me up. Be like, yo, I'm about to cop something, and you don't get it. Bro. That'd be the worst. People be doing that with sessions all the time. And whenever I did have merch, people would do that with merch, yeah. too. I don't get people. It sucks, though, because... I feel like everyone's done it to people at some point where you'll ask somebody about something and then you just either accidentally ghost them or you're just mm-hmm. like, oh, fuck, like, I, I just, I'm not getting this. Number. I feel you. I've done it. I've done it a couple of times. Yeah, I'm not even going to lie. Little, probably like, a couple times, probably like three, four times, no bullshit. And it's really just because when I hit them, 
I had the bread and either they took too long to respond and I didn't have the bread yeah. anymore. So then I was like, damn. And then I maybe like forgot about it. It was just like, I didn't want it anymore. Yeah, so I'll just be like, you know, I don't even want this shit anymore. But most of the time, like, unless I'm ready to buy something, I'm not going to hit somebody up be like, yo, I need to cop this shit. Da, da, da. You feel me? How do you feel about high-end fashion? People that don't mm. spend any money on local clothing brands at all, but they go spend fucking $2,000 on a Louis Vuitton tee. Hey, man, whatever floats your boat. Like, I don't know. I feel like... It's alright, bro. I don't. I don't know if that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do with their money. You feel me? Like they want to look like everybody else. That's them. I don't blame them though. I feel like um, certain people do that because they want to portray an image. You feel me? And I don't even want certain people like that in my clothes. I want people that want to express themselves freely. You feel me? To wear my shit. I don't want people wearing it just because like it's I'm Tomo or it's clothes yeah. by. You feel me? Just because they seen somebody else wearing it. I would rather like people wear it because they actually like it. I feel like the people that are buying the high end shit, they either buying it because it's expensive or because everybody else got it. You feel me? Yeah, I don't know. It's just weird to me that people that at least that are friends th- with creators that have brands and stuff. I've seen mm. it before where there's people I know that just have not bought a single article of clothing off of anybody that they know, mm-hmm. but then they'll go spend two, three thousand dollars at the Louis store to get two t shirts. And I'm just scratching my head. I'm like, like you said, whatever floats your boat, but at the same time, that's going to. Uh, some dude that literally the most wealthy isn't that Bernard Arnault or Bernard, I can never pronounce this dude's name Bernard Arnault I think that's his name the owner of Louis Vuitton richest dude I don't in the even world. know who runs that he's the richest yeah, dude in the world richest dude in the world is the dude who owns Louis Vuitton richest, that's crazy richest dude in the world so you're literally just putting money in this dude that has billions I think he's the closest to a trillionaire in the fucking world you're giving money to this dude and then you got a bunch of friends that you could hit up that you're paying probably less than five percent maybe even lower <laughs> of the price. But you choose to go to Louis. Doesn't Louis own like some smaller fashion houses and shit too? Yeah, no, he owns. He owns. I think Louis. I think he has ownership in Gucci. He has ownership yeah. in all mad luxury brands. Yeah, that's mad crazy. luxury brands. I got um. That's a just Forbes. a monopoly. Yeah, oh, bullshit. Uh, I got a Forbes article or Forbes magazine. Mm-hmm. I read on him on an airplane back from Miami one year, and I'll never forget. Like just reading all this shit, I was like, this dude is fucking genius. Yeah. But, yeah. Richest dude in the U.S. I, I not even U.S. Whole world. Richest dude in the whole entire world. Over Elon, everybody. Fucking off That's of crazy handbags and two thousand dollar t shirts. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> an old ass brand too. Is it still yeah. within the family of like like who started or somebody like outside the family think acquired so. it? I don't even think so. That's crazy. I'm pretty sure he he just acquired it because he owns mad other brands. I forget what other brands, and I don't know if all of them he owns outright or if he just has stakes and. Yeah, because I was watching a video on Louis and it was talking about like how like. That shit started like in the early 1900s, no yeah, bullshit. It was making trunks and shit. Yeah. Like, damn. That shit started. One of them shits. Early, bro. It's crazy yeah. how a lot of those brands started fucking almost 100 years ago. Yeah. That right. shit is insane, bro. Rip Virgil. Rip Virgil. Because if Virgil yeah. had a longer. Virgil's impact already was so dramatic. But if he yeah. had a longer lifetime, bro, that dude would have been able to make off white. Like some, it, I feel like in the time that he was here, he still did. had like a great ass impact no, on the world. You feel me? Did, bro. Not even just in clothes, just mm-hmm. in like um overall culture. You feel me? Yeah. Tell you shit like creative culture, music culture, just all that. Uh, You'll see his impact in different areas in the brands that he touched and like just the different people and artists that he touched. I uh, know even Louis, yeah. he, even Louis. He, yeah, facts. he would have really changed Louis Vuitton's whole entire direction. Yeah, I got to go to the um when they had the Louis Nike um shit like after he passed. It was in um Brooklyn. That. It was for like a week. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it was crazy. And it kind of like I went in there and it was it was dope to see no bullshit. It, it kind of felt like a memorial service almost because it kind of yeah. showed you like the latest project that he was working on and like they just showed you like all the shoes there in person. Know that. Like so you got to see all of them and it was like this little holographic thing that you could like look at the shoe and shit and uh-huh. you could see everything he was working on. Yeah, it was dope. I did not even know that. I wish I went to that. Did you go to the museum exhibit they had? Um, I did a while ago. That was um when he was still alive. Actually, yeah, that was yeah, the um yeah. when he got the ICA. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get to go to that shit. I wish yeah, I did. bro. Oh, so I think the I, it might still be going on in some places. Really? Like they had it in Brooklyn not too long ago. Probably like at the end of twenty twenty two. Thought it was a one time thing. Um, yeah, nah. For the ICA, for the ICA, it was a one time thing. But it was like a um the gallery was a tour, so it was like they go on uh, tour to different um, museums across the country. It might yeah, be over now, but I'm, I'm not sure. If you look it up, you might, yeah, be, you might have, have to catch a trip shit, somewhere. Bro. Yeah, if they have that shit, so I definitely want to go to that. Yeah. I definitely want to go to that. Did you see, Um, I just thought about this because we're talking about bigger brands, but did you see the new v ownership in the way that v is now? Nah, wow, what happened? Bro, so uh, Bari is just not involved with v at all anymore. They got bought mm. out by a major corporation 
and everything stays on and comes out in seasons and shit the way that all mm-hmm. the other big brands do. But like a shirt is like a thousand dollars now. Mm. The jeans are like three thousand. Like it's crazy ass prices, but none of it sells out. But it's all just complete redesigns. It's like a completely different brand almost. Mm, I don't know crazy. if you knew about it, but yeah, it's crazy. That's why. I mean, well, if he sold it, and he probably sold it for a reason. I don't even know if he sold it or if he got kicked out because of his whole. Oh, because all the allegations. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Because all of that. Him and Ian Connor, bro, were so influential, and then they both just. Hey, bro, I don't know. That, that shit crazy. That shit be on me, bro. Uh, that I shit, I can never, like, wrap my head around that because I just think of when I was in, like, high school and that whole mm-hmm. period of um when all of those brands were coming out in the whole ASAP era and shit, yeah, bro. Fuck. It's, like, crazy. Crazy. But that shit sucks. Just people getting canceled in general, how we were talking about earlier, um, mm-hmm. Jonathan Major shit. It's crazy how these people that are, they literally have achieved their dreams and they're in the perfect position they just fuck up so yeah. badly. Like that Jonathan Major shit. You a Marvel fan? Kinda, kinda, kinda. 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 I use, I don't I don't feel like I be watching movies as much as I used to be, uh, unless it's like I don't know movie I really 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 want to see. They don't have. A lot but of I good stopped ones around like the first Avengers, and Damn. I couldn't keep up because it was spamming it. At a certain <laughs> point, it was spamming it. It was like Marvel movie. Bah. It was Lately, like next one. Bah. Next one. Bah. I was just like, damn, this is too much, bro. Uh, you can't overwhelm it. And then I like if you like you could watch any Marvel movie. Like then you're in there and then certain people's like, do you know when this happened in this movie and it connects to this? I'm like, nah, bro. Uh, that's Tell me a, like, yeah. It, I could not imagine because I watched all of them up until um, Infinity War, like mm. all of them in theater. I couldn't imagine people that have to go back now and watch all of them to catch up because that shit yeah. would not be fun at all. Especially the like the last year, I think they the last year or two they dropped more content. Hours worth than they dropped in the past ten years. That's crazy. <laughs> like just bro. through the TV shows. Yeah, they're really milking it. No bullshit. I feel like they could yeah. condense all of this into like a show. Yeah. They should do like more shows to no, explain they different do, arts. But the shows are ass, bro. Bro, a lot of the shows have been ass. Like Moon Knight was good. I can't even think of another one that was good besides mm. Moon Knight. I forget the other ones. I would. She Hulk was ass. The Marvels For was real? ass. I seen an episode She-Hulk, of She-Hulk, and I was like, I got to check this shit out. Yo, no. She-Hulk, bro, was booty. I think they literally went back and changed <laughs> shit in the show because the reviews were so bad. Like, they That's updated crazy. it, and the episodes are different from at first. But that shit was not fun. They had Megan the Stallion in it, bro. <laughs> That's the episode I seen. The ep- Megan the Stallion episode, bro. Like, yeah, that shit bro. was just... They should not be doing that shit in Marvel. Even Star Wars, they ruined Star Wars, bro. They had fucking... um. Lizzo and Jack Black pop mm. up in Star Wars, bro. What was the context? Like, they, they just were playing characters, but they mm. made it mad funny. And it was just so out of pocket for Star Wars. It was, I see. It was mad out of pocket. The last thing I want to see is Lizzo and Jack Black when I'm watching a Star Wars movie. <laughs> like, I see. Literally. How did you feel seeing um Donald Glover in uh, one of the Star Wars movies? He did a good job. He did? He did a good job, but that movie overall sucked. Damn. That. He he got fucked because that movie overall sucked. But what I fuck with about him, bro, I low key I never really got into um, Childish Gambino's music. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the acting shit I've seen from him, he's he's a fucking good ass actor. Yeah, he's Atlanta's crazy. Artist first, bro. Doesn't he direct Atlanta too and everything? Yeah, he wrote it, directed it, um, acted in it. Yeah, five. I think he's gonna go down as a legend just because that's so. Him and Fifty are like the first artists to really do that, as far as I'm aware. Ice Cube. Oh yeah, Ice Cube. Yeah, facts. Ice Cube. I'm I'm tripping. Ice Cube did yeah. that, but it, as far as it, bro, that TV empire that Fifty Cent built up mm. is fucking genius, bro. Fucking genius. I literally watched all of BMF last week, and Word. then I started watching. I gotta catch up, bro. Oh, BMF shit. is so fine. Yeah. I watched all that shit. I seen like the first three episodes of the second season. I gotta bro. finish the rest of it. Yo, I'm telling you, finish that shit. I just want yeah. the new season now, but my Fair. dumbass. I never watched past season two of Power when Power came out mad long mm-hmm. ago. So now I got to go through all these different fucking seasons and I'm catching up on Power and that shit is... You be binge watching? Bro, I've been binge watching it because I just put shit on in the background while I'm editing. So I'll just yeah. listen to it and then whenever I do have free time, I'm I'm a homebody. I sit there and fucking watch TV. I'll sit there and watch TV. I'm going to get back into some of the music because every time I have people like you that just do a bunch of shit, I'm just so fascinated by all the other shit because I'm used to the music part of it. But yeah. you just dropped a new project with your boy I Owen. Did. Shout out Owen, you feel me? Just dropped Fuck It, the EP featuring Invader and Listen to Lux. 
You feel me? Go stream that shit. And we dropping again. You feel me? I don't know if this is going to come out before June 9th, but June 9th, we're doing a listening party for you this album. What? Legendary album of the year. You feel me? Let me check real quick. Pop this out. Swag. This act. Oh, no. It's coming out June 14th. Fuck. It's coming out June 14th. Fuck it. It's coming out June 14th. When you see this, it'll already have happened. Yeah. And if you wasn't there, you're lame. You feel me? Shit, honestly, it's a perfect opportunity if this is coming out the Wednesday afterwards. Yeah. Let's talk about that project. It's already going to be out by this time. Yeah, facts. <laughs> it is. I'm not going to say the release date on here because you got to be at the event to know the release date. But it's dropping in June, you feel me? And it's it's just going to be fire. It's 10 tracks. Um, Me and Owen's been working on this shit for a little while. Um, Probably since, like, January. We've been locked in, like, on a weekly, almost, like, bi-weekly basis. Just cooking up. And then, I'm not going to say too much, but we have a lot of stuff coming, you feel me? There's a lot of cool features on the album, you feel me? A lot of good beats, all produced by Owen, you feel me? Some of them, um, one of them's produced by me. But yeah, we've been cooking up, no bullshit. I feel like people's really going to fuck with this. I've been listening to it, I was listening to it on the way over here, and I was really fucking with it, no bullshit. How many um features you got on it? Um, Making it sound like the features are Three crazy. It's three, three on there You feel me So it's not yeah. too many But it's, it's some. Yeah it's three Damn. You guys are dropping an EP and an album Very close together I fuck Yeah with facts it. Gotta flood I'm about to be flooding the whole year No bullshit Bro. Yeah What's your thoughts on people That just hold on to their music And don't drop anything I feel like that hurts the process You feel me You gotta drop You gotta release the art The art doesn't hold any value If it's not out in society Into the atmosphere You feel me Um, I feel like you just gotta drop You feel me but you got to drop with intention. You got to plan it out. You know what I'm saying? But don't overthink it. I feel like a lot of times as artists, we overthink shit. Um, you know, honestly, you just got to release and just make sure that everything is cohesive. You feel me? And it aligns. And it's easier said than done, but it's like you ain't going to learn unless you do it. So you got to drop to know how to drop. You feel me? But, yeah, certain shit need to stay in the vault, though. So it depends. Because I have a bunch of music I make, but not everything going to come out. You feel me? What would you say your ratio is? If you go in the studio and you make 10 songs, how many of them are droppable? Um, 10. 10? Yeah, facts. Damn. It's 10, but like it wouldn't all come out around the same time. Like Sometimes I'll be like, I'll make a song, I'll be like, yo, damn, I want to drop this this week. Sometimes I'll make a song, I'll be like, all right, I should save this for a project. Type yeah. shit. So it depends. But I like to drop a lot of the music I make, at least now within the past, like, um, I want to say, like, year and a half, I've been dropping like a lot of the shit I've been making. Before then, I have music from like, just like way before, since like, since like 2018, 2019, 2020, all them years, I have music. And then certain times I'll be like, yo, I could use this song, I'm gonna put it out, you feel me? Like, I think last year I dropped a lot of songs. I dropped where they were from like 2020 and 2021. Oh, yeah. bullshit. What do you like more, singles or projects? I like doing projects. I don't really like dropping singles. I, I feel like I'd rather release like a body of work so that people could listen to it and it's like a whole experience. Um, I feel like when you do singles, it's cool. Like singles is cool too, cause um, sometimes it works to your benefit. Like if you know it's something that's gonna go up and it's like something that people's gonna play on repeat, you should put it out. But I feel like a lot of the music I make, um, a lot of the times they're made for projects. I do have certain songs where it's like oh, I can see this as a single, but I definitely like projects. And I feel like people don't really make albums anymore. A lot of people just make like um like compilations or like mixtapes and shit. You feel me? So I really like take pride in like creating albums and creating landscapes and um. Universes within the music. What's your favorite part about putting together an album? Um, the sequencing. Like I like um picking the order of the tracks, doing the transitions and shit. Like creating the storyline, adding beat tags and shit in there throughout the um album. Yeah, I really like sequencing, bro. Like, I, like yo, a lot of y'all need to hit me up to executive produce your shit. You feel me? I'll get your shit right. You feel me? I feel like a lot of the projects people put out too can be turned into albums by just rearranging the songs too and give it some type of storyline or structure. Thousand percent. Yeah, facts. A lot of people don't take advantage of the fact that whenever you're dropping a project, it's just an opportunity to one create a world, but also to just create a moment. Yeah, I feel like the best part about albums and or just projects in general is just the moment behind it. Like you're talking about, you got the release party and shit. Yeah, all of that building up to it, the whole entire rollout, the whole yeah, entire rollout, facts. Of it, it's just creating. Experience. I feel like there's less pressure on it because we're in the streaming era, like, yeah. and people just feel like they just like gotta put anything out and just go and it's just like but it's like take your time like because like when you think about it the way people see it is like ah, ah if people don't fuck with it i could delete this or some shit but it's like uh, bro before you used to drop cds you feel me like you couldn't go and delete a delete cd after it, it came out you feel me like take time like create a precious product that you put out into the um, atmosphere it's part of your portfolio i see that like a lot like anything you put out is part of your um portfolio you feel me 
Like, so take time to like create like a body of work and like drop the shit. Yeah. What do you think the fine line is between the whole entire quality over quantity debate? Um, I feel like the quality and the quantity should be equal. It should be equal. You know what I'm saying? Like, it should, I don't know. It's it's a hard thing to achieve, but yeah. it's like, yeah, your quality shouldn't exceed your quantity. Depending on what you work on You feel me Like I feel like If you're making music You gotta just like Alright if you're making music Your quality could Your quantity could exceed your quality But the stuff you're releasing The quality has to exceed the quantity If that makes sense You yeah. feel me Like how you was like how, like how I was explaining Like I might make a lot of songs But I don't release a lot of it You feel me yeah. Cause that's where the creative control comes in You feel me So you should Yeah how do you pick what songs you're gonna drop? Mm, that's a good question. I feel like it's a I feel like it's a feeling thing. Like I'll just listen to it and I'll be like, yeah, people gotta hear this, you feel me? And then certain songs I'll be like, um, I'm not ready to release this yet. A lot of the times too, I like my music to reflect like how I'm doing in life at the moment. I like I like releasing my art like fresh while it's still like fresh. I don't like sitting on a song for too long because I I might not feel the same way I felt when I made the song originally, yeah. you feel me? So I, I don't like putting that um, energy I feel like once you put out music It's like putting out energy Into the um, atmosphere For people to like experience You know that so, yeah. Are you more the dude That you write something Before Or you were more in the moment Talking about that Yeah I be um A lot of times I'll write Like if I write I'll write in the studio uh, yeah. I don't ever write Unless like somebody Sent me a song To like do a feature on Then I'll probably listen to it Write, write something And then pull up A lot of times I'm either writing in the studio Or I'm freestyling So it's like Just coming up with it While I'm there Cooking up in the moment like if I'm not in the studio, I'm probably not really working on music for real, for real. Yeah. yeah, I be doing a lot, so it's like I gotta be in there to like actually be like involved in the process. Like a lot of people say, like they walk around, think of bars, and you know, write it down. Like I don't really do that. Like if I'm like sometimes I will, but I'm not gonna write it down. You yeah. feel me? Like I don't know if it's if it's super fire, I might write that shit down. But I, I feel like when I'm not in the studio, I don't really think like to like write. Like I'll get ideas for like mixtape concepts and like album concepts and shit like that, and I'll write those down. But like as far as like lyrics or melodies. Um, shit like that I feel like it's really Just like an in-studio process And it, everything I come up with Is like there on the spot uh, yeah. Is it easier for you To rap on your own beats Or on other people's beats? Um, I feel like either or I feel like It's definitely Like It's more fluid for me To rap on other people's beats Because It's not a beat That I've heard like 30 times on loop While I'm making it You feel me? I feel like a lot of times If I'm If I don't have an idea For a beat Like within the first Like five minutes Of me making it I'm not going to have an idea by the time I'm done with it. So it's like I'm making the beat and I'm just building it so I could create this piece of art. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to like rap on it. Because uh, then it's like, damn, I done heard this shit like on loop mad times. I don't think I have anything shit for this shit. But when I hear like a beat that somebody else plays for me, I have like a fresh mindset. Um, and I'm like, boom, all right, I think I might have an idea for this. I didn't have to like focus on doing something. But like, certain times like I'll make a beat and I have something for it right there and I'm ready to go. But I feel like it's definitely it's definitely easier to rap on other people's beats. No bullshit. What's your favorite song that you have out that you produce for somebody else? That I produce for somebody else. That is out. Let me see. Damn. That's a good question, bro. <laughs> I have a, I have a lot of unreleased shit too with people. That's why I got to see like let me see that I have out. Am I tripping or did you produce some shit on the ET project? Oh, uh, nah, yeah. Then nah. I don't yeah. think you did. Nah, I've been working on some shit with him though. We got some fire shit cooking up. But let me see that I have produced out for somebody. Damn I'll probably say Off my bro Nate's project It's a song called um, Did he call it Levitate And it's a crazy sample No bullshit um, I gotta get Nate on One here I forget who yeah. Someone was telling me He has a crazy ass story Yeah it's a song called Two Virgils And that shit's fire I really fuck with that beat And it's honestly a beat I cooked up And I wanted to do something on it But I could never think of something And then I sent it to him And like it's crazy Cause I didn't expect him To rap on it But he rapped on it And made some crazy shit mm -hmm. um, A lot of people have Shit on my beats and they don't they don't drop it. So like if you have music on my beats, bro, drop that shit. No bullshit. <laughs> you feel know I me? Mean? But yeah. How how does that cause being an artist, you're able to just move at your own pace. You could drop, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You could just drop whenever the fuck you want. But being a producer, I always hear people so pissed off about that. You make these dope ass songs and then they just mm -hmm. never come out or you're waiting forever for them to come out. Yeah, bro. Like it either be like that, but also too, you gotta drop that shit too. Like I'm about to I'm about to work on a tape this year where it's like fully produced by me and um, I'm gonna drop it myself And have like Other people rapping on it too Damn. You feel me Like um, On some like On some producer shit On some, on some college shit Cause that nigga Don't even really Producing like that But 
Just like lock in with a bunch of different artists, create like a compilation tape and drop that shit for real. Um, but yeah, bro, if you're a producer and niggas not dropping the music on your beats, you just put that shit out yourself for real. No bullshit. Just get consent and be like, it's just a go. I feel like a lot of the times they want the artist to release it because. I don't know, maybe because of the platform that the artist might have, but it's also too like if you drop it yourself, you just gotta push that shit and promote it. Yeah. I mean, like a lot of producers came up like that. I dropping the music that they had um, with the artist featured on it. Yeah. Uh, damn, I can't believe you said you. And I, I feel like everybody that does both of them always says they like producing more than being an artist. For real? Yeah, I feel like for the most part, at least. I'm going off of talking to KZ and the couple other people I've talked to, but KZ like got annoyed at first because he started, mm. he liked it, but then he started getting annoyed because he started getting known more for being as an artist, and then he uh, wanted to be known more as a producer. But I feel you. I think he's getting comfortable now with doing both. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy that he said that. No bullshit. When I was like a couple years back, I was like, I'll f- I solely wanted to focus on um, producing. I was like, yeah, this was this was gonna make um, help me make it, yeah. and. Like, yeah, I just kept rapping because just like I'm passionate about it. But like, and then I'll release something, people be like, yo, I'm fucking with it, I'm fucking with it. Like, more people just kept fucking with the music, so I'm fuck it. I'm just keep going with it, no mm-hmm. bullshit. But I do like, I do like producing for people too, you feel me? Uh, yeah. It's crazy because it's two completely different sides of the coin. Yeah, two facts. Completely different sides of the coin. Kind of, but they're kind of similar, no nah, bullshit. They're kind of similar, but also, I always say this to people, it's like a superpower because if you're an artist, mm. Wait, we were talking about YouTube beats and shit earlier. How you were saying you were sending your songs to blogs and shit, and they were like, "Oh, you can't be doing shit on yada yada yada." A lot of artists don't realize if you unlock that level of creativity for yourself and are yeah. able to make your own beats, nobody's gonna be able to make shit for you as good as you can make shit for yourself. Exactly. Like, yeah. No, I feel that breaks down barriers, bro, and just being able to have the ability. Oh, I don't have to go call this person and wait on them for a week to change this minuscule little fucking one part of the song. Yeah. I could just do it by myself. Like, I feel you. I feel like it's like that for like a lot of mediums because it's like a lot of the times artists they're stuck like waiting on people, whether it's a videographer, photographer for like yeah. cover arts and shit like that. But if you expand your mediums, you'll know how to like you have way more creative control yeah. over your art because a lot of the times nobody could see your vision the way you could see it. So once you have that vision in your mind, if you're able to execute it, you could put it out and make it tangible. To the world Like a lot of the times you're, you're trusting other people With your vision So it's like If it doesn't come out The exact way you want it You're either mad Or you're like Fuck it I just gotta settle with this But like once you expand Your mediums No bullshit Like More like You'll just have way more Creative control over the stuff That you're doing uh, Yeah Um, How did it feel When you broke down that barrier And how long would you take it Or say that it took you Until you felt confident In being able to do both Like both beats And yeah. um, rapping Um Probably within this Yo When I first started making beats I was making some ass shit For like Probably like two months And after them two months I was like yeah I made one beat And I was like This shit's fire <laughs> And I put it on YouTube And bro I, I swear bro That shit got like 5k The first day or some shit And I was oh, like bro. yeah Yeah I was dropping beats On YouTube in like 2018 bro. Yo I was I low key have some beats That have like like Not too much But it's like uh-huh. like 20k views and shit But then after a while I had to stop Cause I was like Too many people Was getting on the beats and I was like, yo, they was making some ass music on it. <laughs> and I was like, I can't control whoever's getting on my beats because it's on YouTube. You feel me? Yeah, so I was yeah. like, fuck it. I was like, I only want people, right. like, if I'm making beats for somebody, I want to be in the same room with them. I want to meet yeah. them. You feel me? Type shit. Or like, at least like, let it be me sending out the beats to them. You feel me? Because yeah. it's like, I actually fuck with this artist. I don't want people to just have access to my shit to just download it. But all them beats I made, they're still up there because I was like, fuck it. You feel me? It's the time. Yeah. Like, I just left it up there. It's the art. It's all in the atmosphere. YouTube producer Tombo. Yeah, facts. You feel me? Very rare. I was going by a different name back then too. I was going by Thomas Artillery. What the hell? And I was dropping on my um beats on YouTube. How'd yeah. You come facts. up with that. Ah, crazy story. Long story. No bullshit. Um, nah, not a long story, but it's a crazy story. Uh, so when I first started rapping, my name, my artist name was Tommy Guns, and then uh, when I was getting ready to drop music, it was, that name was already taken. So I was like, damn, I gotta think of something else. So I just extended Tommy to Thomas, and then Guns to Artillery, and I was like, fuck it, it just stuck. I was Then I switched back I, I just started using my My actual name Cause like When I introduced myself I'm not about to be like Yo I'm Thomas Artillery Or I'm Thomas Like It just felt weird So I was just like Fuck it I just switched it back You feel me So, so Tomo and Thomas is your real name No Tomo is my real oh, name Oh Tomo is Yeah So you just added Thomas Instead of Tomo Yeah like That's why I came up with the name Tommy Guns Cause it was kinda like Just like It was a cool name Like kinda had my name in it But then like after And then I came up with Thomas Artillery Cause that name was taken and then I was like, yeah, I'm not about to introduce people as like my artist name. Like uh, I just tell people my name. And then Damn. And then it just became your name kind of. Yeah, type of shit. You feel me? Tomo. So, yeah. Your name is like mad catchy. It's like a name that you hear and you just don't like forget it. I don't know. Like it just rolls off the tongue mad easy. 
Tomo. Yeah. <laughs> it just mm-hmm. sticks, bro. I don't yeah, know. Facts. It's, it's my father's name. I'm a junior, so we both got the same name. Yeah. Damn. I've never, yeah. I, I've never asked somebody that's a junior, like, what is that like? Having somebody in that was mm-hmm. with you just being called the exact for same a while. Name. It's like when I was growing up, I was more around my father. Uh, he don't live in the country no more, but yeah. yeah. Um, shit, just be like they'll be like small Tomo and big Tomo, and like my family's Trini, so like <laughs> they'll say it with the accent, shit, be like small Tomo, small man. You feel me? Like so, but after a while, like now people, like, my family, they just call me Tomo. You feel me? Like even yeah. some of my aunts, they'll call me like little Tomo and shit like that. You feel me? Just so, like yeah, this yeah. is just yeah, Damn. little Tomo. <laughs> yeah. me. Um, going back a couple questions on how you were talking about just being able to do stuff by yourself. The mm-hmm. graphics. How'd you get into making graphics? Because like I was saying off camera, you made the five hundred eight baby. Fire. Yeah, facts, like, bro. Like just all all in the same boat. Like around that time when I was learning how to um rap and learn how to make beats and shit, I needed cover art, and so I downloaded Pixar, and from there, like it was just up, bro. Like, I do, every, and that's the thing too. A lot of people make excuses about not wanting to learn how to do shit. Like, bro, I do everything on my phone in Pixar. You feel me? Yeah. Like anything's possible. You could do anything. Like you have a whole fucking, you have a million dollars in your hand. You just gotta use this shit. No bullshit. You feel me? But it was just honestly out of necessity. Like everything I learned how to do was out of necessity. Because like especially like with the uh videos and shit too, a lot of niggas be taxing on videos. So I was like, fuck it, I'm about to learn how to do this shit myself. You feel me? And I just eventually did that. But uh I do wanna work with other like sometimes I work with other people on graphics and shit, like if I but it's like if I fuck with the artist. I'm not doing it because I need them to do it. It's real intentional. Like it's like I know this artist has this certain look and this is what I wanna go for. And I feel like once you don't know how to do those um once you don't know how to expand your mediums and shit like you have to work with other artists out of necess out of necessity and things become less intentional like you're not working with certain artists because you want to collaborate them you're working with them because you need them to yeah. create the shit for you you feel me so it's kind of like even though um the ep i dropped with oh fuck it i made that shit you feel me we had a certain vibe that we was going for um uh my friend jasmine born shoot she shot it but like i edited everything and i'm like all right i have this idea but for the new album that we're about to drop, I had like a real specific look that I want to go for it. Um, and my friend Mice drew it, so it came out fire, no bullshit. And I feel like every time I collaborate with somebody in that aspect, it comes out fire because I'm thinking of this person, like, I know I want this yeah. person to do this. It's not like I need this person to yeah. do it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. what would you say to people? Because a lot of people be bitching and complaining and they'll be like, oh, I can't, I can't get cover art, so I can't drop music or I can't do whatever mm-hmm. the fuck. And they're just scared to take it upon themselves to just learn that. What would you say to them? Hey, bro, just do it. Nigga, no bullshit. You got to have more confidence in yourself. Like, I feel like a lot of people, like, a lot of people, it's not that they don't have the confidence, but it's like, they feel like other people want to approve of it or something. Like, I feel like you have eyes, you have ears, you could judge what you could do to your best ability. And a lot of people are scared of, like, the learning curve. I I understand that because it's like, they want it to be like, all right, First day I'm doing it, everything's gonna come out fire, bang, bang, bang. But it's not gonna be like that. You're gonna go through some weeks, maybe even months of just like, all right, learning how to do this, creating stuff that you don't like until you get to the point where you're like, all right, this boom, this is a solid product that I create by myself. And now you don't have to wait on anybody. It's at the it's like in your hands at that point. Being self sufficient is literally the number one superpower as an artist. Or just exactly. creative in general. Yeah. As a creative in general. Like as a human, no bullshit. Yeah, like just honestly. learn. Like niggas be niggas honestly. hate to learn. I feel like no bullshit. You should be learning something every day until the day you die. I feel like honestly, it's like the mm-hmm. same thing as the people that they got a crib and then they pay a maintenance dude to come over and change that white bulb instead of fucking yeah. watching a five minute YouTube video to fucking yeah, change that shit themselves, bro. But we're gonna get in the last couple questions. But big one thoughts on just the Massachusetts music scene from when you stepped foot. In the everything, when you really started becoming mm-hmm. aware of just everything that was in it, to everything you see right now, what are your thoughts on the growth? What do you think we're lacking? What do you think our strengths are? Just mm-hmm. overall thoughts on the scene. I think the mass scene is fire, no bullshit. It's fire, and I really seen this shit grow. And I really like, so I've been in the Boston scene for a little while, but just like being introduced to the mass scene as a whole, like just figuring out like um, different um, spots in mass where people's from, like even like out here in Brockton and shit and different scenes. Um, it's just fire. Like, uh, I started coming around the scene like around like 2019 and shit. Before then, like, I was still hip to a certain shit that was going on because I was making music, but I was just young. So like, a lot of times I wouldn't be able to go to events. My mom wouldn't let me. She's like, yo, da da da. As soon as I turned like 17, 18, I was like, bet I'm about to start popping out. You feel me? Um, and yeah, from there, just like seeing, just like 
the way shows are curated to like the type of art that people's being released is fire and you can see like certain influences from back then until now you know what i'm saying um i feel like what's grown a lot is just like the acceptance and like the collaboration aspect a lot of the times um like i always see like you'll see it's kind of like clicky like i don't know it's just like even before i started making music boston in general was just clicky like within friend groups and shit like that people usually stent, um tend to like stick to each other but um i feel like right now people are like growing out of that because it's kind of like you gotta expand your network and you gotta like meet new people and see new faces type of shit you know um what i feel like the mass scene is lacking um hmm. i feel like not really lacking much we're in a growing period like i feel like if anything, I would just say, like, niggas could work on the promotional aspect and, like, the branding. Like, Noble really spoke well on that. No bullshit. Like, the yeah. branding and making sure everything's cohesive. And really just promoting your um, music, not just to people here, but, like, trying to grow and expand it. Because everybody here knows what's going on here is fire. But we got to show that shit to the rest of the world. You feel me? So, like, if you taking trips and shit, like, nigga, play local music. Wear local brands so that, like, if you go somewhere out the country or out the state, people could look at you and be like, yo, what's that? Yo, it's from Boston, you feel me? It's Boston artist, local shit, you feel me? Like, really rep that shit like it's your hometown, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, or, like, everywhere in Mass, you feel me? Like, and be proud of that shit. Like, I feel like, just really just gotta, ex like, you gotta expand, no bullshit. Like, the same way people travel to New York or L.A. to get popping, they gotta come to Boston or come over here, you feel me, to get popping and, like, come out here sightseeing and shit. And just come out here and be lit. For me, I feel like a lot of people's problems is bro. They, I think Noble talked about this on his episode too. Everyone just wants to be the biggest dude in Boston. Facts. Everyone just thinks about Boston, and then after Boston, they're like, okay, Massachusetts. But it's like realistically, everybody should be thinking about just the broader scheme of the yeah. whole entire world, bro. Everybody's putting Boston itself. Yes, we need work. The only thing I think we need work on is infrastructure and, like you said, artists with brand identity. Those are the mm -hmm. two main things. I think we need people to help. Guide artists in the right direction. We need more yeah, yeah, yeah. platforms and shit that are going to be able to get artists' shit heard. But I think people just need to start <laughs> looking for the bigger picture because people are just focused on being the biggest person here. Yeah. No one's really, except for like Millie's and the people that are already up where they need to be for the most part. You don't see a lot of the young dudes. Actually, no, you see you see a good amount of them like VB and shit be traveling. They be yeah. doing whatever. But also, we need more lit venues. Like yeah, that we definitely we and we bro lit venues and black owned venues that understand the culture. You feel me? We need a venues like that, that understand, yeah. but we also need fucking. I know it's never going to change, but the fact that everything closes so early here, bro. Yeah, like I know yeah. LA is the same way, but you go down to like Miami, it's like six in the morning, shit's going. And you go mm. to New York, it's four in the morning, shit's closing. Yeah. Over here, I mean, we just got so a new really. out in Boston. We got a new um nightlife director or some shit. So we about to see what that goes with, like um, on the on the city council or some shit. I seen I that it was like that. last year. Yeah, I didn't even know that. That's been a big thing though. And people have talked about on the podcast is just uh, lack of acceptance for the mm -hmm. culture overall. Like you're talking about the venues and shit. I've heard mad shows getting shut down for whatever reasons. Yeah. People being blacklisted from being able to perform in places, and that shit. It happens everywhere, but also at the same time, it sucks whenever it happens to people that are genuinely just trying to build. Yeah, it facts. sucks to see that shit, bro. But what's your thoughts on the whole narrative, the Boston hateful mindset? Because my argument is I definitely saw signs of it when I was older, and I still see signs of it right now, but I see it in the older generation. I don't see it in the mm. young. The young motherfuckers, like the whole entire fucking group of people that be at like VB shows, Kia shows, all of mm. that, you guys... Adam, there's like this big ass group of people that just are fucking with each other, bro. Like mm. TT, um, Jinx. Th there's so many different people, but it's like this big ass circle that is just supporting each other's shit. And then if people aren't aware, they're getting put on by those other people. Mm. So I don't see it in the young motherfuckers, but the older motherfuckers. But I'm just curious, what's your take on that whole narrative? Because everyone loves to fucking. What's the narrative? Like, what you mean? Boston is full of hate. Everybody loves to say that shit. Uh, I don't think Boston's full of hate. Uh,. I don't feel like Boston's full of hate. I feel like Boston is just a very small place. And when you're in a small place with a lot of people, like, I don't know, like, shit gets, like, kind of, like, claustrophobic. So I feel like a lot of people are just like, ugh, like, for me. But I don't feel like Boston's full of hate. No bullshit. And, like, what aspect? What you mean, like? Everybody just trying to make it seem like everybody's just 
nobody wants to work together. Everybody's like, oh, fuck the next person. I want to do it mm. myself. Which you definitely see signs of, but I, if what I see yeah. with the young... So I would say, yeah, I feel like a lot of people out here, I would say, um, they're like, I feel like a lot of people would be kind of like selfish, no bullshit, which is understandable, but it's like, yeah, like you kind of like got to not be selfish at points, no bullshit. Like, I understand that. But I, I want to say it's hateful, yeah. no bullshit. But I could, I could definitely say, like, out in Boston, like, we're selfish. We're, we're, we're a selfish, like, city. No bullshit. It's like, you ever heard of, like, Southern Hospitality? Yeah. They don't have that in Boston. You it's feel like me? Like, opposite. a lot of times you go down the street, like, you see somebody, like, tweaking or some shit, like, you about to mind your business. You feel yeah. me? Like, tight shit. Like, it just, that's just like a, that's just like a Boston thing in general. Yeah. Like, maybe not even selfish is the word, but we're really, like, we mind our business. No bullshit. Yeah. You feel me? So a lot of people, like, a lot of the times they'll see, like, they'll see something going on. You're like, yeah. I'm going to just stick to what I got going on over here. You feel me? I'm going to mind my business type shit. A lot of people really, like, we need more, like, hospitality. We need to be more hospitable. You feel me? Like, really, like, embracing type shit, I guess. We need more people that are just willing to but we a real, it's a, it's a real gritty pace, place over here. No bullshit. So I understand why I get like that. But, yeah. Uh, people just need to be more willing to hear other people's sides. Because I feel like a lot of people are just closed off to anything that's not themselves. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They don't want to think about just the broader scheme of shit. Like you could, yeah, facts. Like I, I peeped, I peeped Ken Frank on here. He said the shit. He was like, he was like, we gotta get like the Skittle Jambalaya. Yeah, no, but- <laughs> <laughs> facts, bro. Literally, bro. Literally, because yeah. Boston. That's what I was talking about with them. Boston is um literally like it's a like Skittles pack if you think about it. Because mm-hmm. you got the rap. You got you got so many different genres. It's a smoothie of just. Random yeah, yeah, yeah. shit, bro. No There's bullshit. not one specific sound at all. There's literally not one specific sound at all. It's just a cluster. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get into the different scenes in Boston. No bullshit. Like I just started like getting hip to like um different people and, and artists and shit in the R&B scene. I'm trying next. I'm trying to like see what's up with the rock scene and shit, the jazz scene, all that. No bullshit. Because it's like I feel like I'm very involved in the rap scene. Like kind of like the fashion scene type shit. Boston. That's the thing too. I feel like Boston's in a very developmental stage. So it's like the shit that we're seeing now is not gonna be the same shit that we've seen in ten years. Yeah. Like we're seeing the start of something. Like imagine, like you know, when you see a building get built, like that's just like over the course of like two and a half years. And so one day you might go there, and you see just pillars in the ground. You might go there like six months later, you might see like an elevator shaft. Yeah. You go there a couple like at the end of the year, shit's built, it's done. So like right now we're in the developmental stage, and we're just like the pillars. We're setting up the pillars, yeah. and we're getting ready to build like a big ass building. You feel me? Everyone's getting their own offices and floors figured out. Facts, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Um, what do you think it's going to take to get the scene just where it needs to be? Um, Shit, us. You just got to keep dropping, keep putting stuff out, and keep, like, growing and, and getting better at the shit that we're doing. You feel me? Like, don't be scared to learn. Like, like you got to learn. No bullshit. Whatever it is, whether it's, like, picking up a new medium or learning more of your craft specifically, you feel me? Like, I feel like as a recording artist, you should be, like, you should at least know how to record yourself. Even if you're not recording yourself and mixing your shit, you should at least know how to record yourself. And that's, like, a bare minimum. It's, like, I feel like a lot of people have that approach. Same thing with, like, designing and shit. Like, you should be able to at least make a shirt with your hands. You feel me? Photography and shit, all that. Like, you should, like, keep learning in your craft and keep putting shit out and expanding. You feel me? And don't be afraid to, like, um, to show other people the process and help, help niggas. You feel me? Like, sometimes people need help. No bullshit. A lot of times people are not gonna ask for help. So if people do ask you for help, I feel like like offer that shit. I feel like a lot of times people ask me for advice and shit, I give it. Cause it's like you never know. The shit like I could have not told a nigga, could have just kept him from saving the world, you feel me? Or whatever he has to do, whatever his mission is. It's like if I withhold that information from him, I don't know how that would have changed the trajectory of like what could have happened. It's like it's kinda like the butterfly effect. Uh if you ever heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like I like to just like share knowledge, you feel me? Like shit, a lot of people want to tax on the knowledge or they want to like withhold the knowledge to themselves, but like, yeah. In fact, that was a real right there. <laughs> that shit it's was crazy. definitely a real right there. That shit was fire. That shit Look. was fire. I had an- another question before the advice question. You kind of just answered the advice question, but something else. Mm-hmm. Big piece of advice that you would just give any creative. Absolutely jack shit. They ain't got nothing right now. They're just getting started. They don't know where the fuck to go. They might want to make clothes. They might want to do beats or whatever the uh, fuck. Be real with yourself, but don't be too hard on yourself. No bullshit. Because, like, you got a lot of people that's, like, and surround yourself with people that would be real with you, too. 
at the end of the day, I don't need somebody to tell me if something's fire, but some people need people like that, you feel me? So it's like, everybody got ears. You could sit down and hear if the song you made or the shirt you made or the picture you took, like, you could see or hear, like, if that shit's not up to par. If it's not up to par, that's okay. Just work on it, you feel me, and get that shit good. But also, when I say don't be too hard on yourself, like, we tend to be our biggest critics. So, like, don't, like, beat yourself up if it's not coming out the exact way you've seen it in your head, you feel me? That's a very hard thing to do. And not many people are actually able to do that shit. You feel me? Even I'm not able to do that shit. A lot of the ideas I come up with, they're never exactly the same way I've seen it in my head. You feel me? Might be close, but it's like, you just got to keep cooking and putting it out. You feel me? How did you make yourself open to criticism? That's the only way that she'll grow. And I really learned to, like, give, like, criticism. I feel like I always took kind of well, but I really learned to, like, give criticism and feedback through working um at Teen Empowerment. And it's, it's kind of like a required part of the job. It's like um, a lot of times we're guiding teens and shit um, and teaching them how to make music, record, perform, how to turn, like, your art into a career. And so, like, a lot of times we have to give them feedback on the stuff that they're creating. And it's like, if I sit there and be like, yo, I don't like this shit or it's just, it's just bad music, how are they going to grow from that? You got to actually tell them, like, what don't you like? Like, what can they do better? You feel me? Like... How, like, you feel me, like, give actual pointers. I feel like a lot of people, um, just artists in general, not even just out here, just in general, like, need to learn how to give, like, constructive feedback, no bullshit. You just saying some shit is ass to somebody is not going to help them get better. Also, you just saying, yo, this is smooth. When you actually didn't like it, it's not going to help them get better. If anything, that's bad, nigga, because uh, they're going to be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? This is smooth. I should drop this. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Yeah, like, Exactly. That'd be a problem. We were talking about, I forget how it came up. We were talking about that yesterday, though. Like, just the whole being selective thing and not giving everybody a chance and not mm-hmm. telling people shit. It's like, I'll tell people, I have so many people that hit me up for interviews, and I'll tell people if their music's not there. I'll straight up be like, yo, yeah. if you want, we have a studio, or just literally just get your music better on your own, work with whoever you need to work with. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people, like you said, they'll just be like, oh, it's ass, or they'll just leave somebody on red, they won't say whatever. But that that little piece of advice you give somebody could be way more beneficial than you could ever realize. Yeah, fuck. Ever realize, bro. I, f- I remembered what I was going to ask you um, <coughs> after the Massachusetts thing. Top three creatives besides yourself that you would advise people to look out for right now. And also, on the side of that, what region around here would you say has the best music scene right now? Mm, Boston. Boston. Boston, easy. For me. Shout out my Boston niggas. Shout out my Dorchester niggas forever. You know what I'm saying? Y'all here. Facts. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, uh, top three creatives people should look out for. Definitely look out for like just any medium, like whatever. It could be a platform, they could be a fashion person, they could be an artist, producer, whatever. Oh, all right. But um Yeah, look out for Myth Boston, look out for BFTC, which is bad for the community, and look out for Hmm. Curious. I'm trying to think because I just named a clothes in a podcast. So I'm trying to think like an artist. Yeah, some music. Look out for Sabo. No bullshit. Look my out for my nigga Sabo, my nigga Young Sabo. He's coming with some shit. No bullshit. Definitely tap in with my nigga Young Sabo. Facts. I'm not aware of him. I'm yeah, aware of him. I dropped a project with him, Groove Renaissance. I, it Ooh. came out on Black Friday last year. Damn, you be dropping mad projects, bro. Yeah, be dropping, be dropping bro. I be trying to put the art out. I'm going to ask you that because I asked Evolve this. What What's your thoughts on the whole entire, like, oversaturation debate? Um, I feel like it's only oversaturation if there's no quality control. You feel me? Like, if you, if you go into... A art gallery and the whole walls filled up with art and it all looks amazing then it's good it's not oversaturated yeah. you feel me if you go in there and like you see a bunch of trash pieces and it's like little speckles and it's just like and then you have one really great piece and then it's just more trash and it's another really great piece it's like that's oversaturated because it's just overwhelming it was unnecessary for you to put all the other shit there just put the really good shit there you feel me but yeah that was my analogy for the oversaturation shit like just have more um, quality control over the shit that you're releasing, but I don't think there's anything as such thing as oversaturation. Like, there's never you can never release too much art. I feel like you could pace yourself, 
but it's never oversaturation. Uh, yeah. I feel like the scene, like, I feel like certain aspects of this shit is oversaturated. And that goes to what we were talking about, like, with the fast fashion. Yeah. Or, like, producers, niggas selling, like, 20 beats for, like, $10 and shit. Like, yeah. that shit, for me, all that shit fucks up the market. Shit like that is bad. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Everything be fast now. TikTok fucked everything up, bro. Yeah. Literally, ever since TikTok came up, everything has been fucked up. But we're talking about AI. I think it was off camera. I would not be surprised if motherfuckers start making AI beats and selling them shits. I would. Yeah, there's already AI beats. I didn't even Most of them songs that the AI artists are on is AI beats too. I didn't even think about that. You saw the shit about China. I've talked about this multiple times. Um, mm, China's nah, top ten so. chart. Bro, out of their top 10 charts, six of the artists are AI artists. Oh, that's crazy. Six of the artists. And is it like, um, they're like AI artists replicating other artists, or is it like no. their own AI like artists? AI like, artists, completely original music, beats from everything that we were talking about. Damn. Yeah. Hey, bro. Beats that's wild, voice, bro. bro. We're, we're living in a crazy Can't fucking support generation. That. Well, bullshit, I cannot I, support bro, that. Bro, I couldn't either. We're living in a crazy ass generation right now, bro. <laughs> crazy ass Dude. generation. Speaking of time, though, 2023, it's a new year, even though we're almost halfway through already, which is crazy to fucking say. Yeah. But what what you got up your sleeve? You got that project, another project with Owen dropping. Got like everything said. up my sleeve. Yes, sir. Look out for that. You feel me? Like, look out for that new shit. New album. I'm about to call it Marvelous. You feel me? Exactly. Look, go look out for that. I'm um, dropping way more shit. I'm about to do a collection this summer. If you don't follow Close by Tomo, go follow Close by Tomo. Uh, you can follow my page, KOBK617. You feel me? We popping. Um... Follow back for the community, you feel me? And yeah, I'm about to just keep dropping a lot of music. I'm about to like, I'm about to get way better with my branding on the clothes side. Like, I have a um, couple goals for this year. Um, So I'm working on those. I want to sell clothes in two different states, so I'm working on that, you feel yeah. me? So Clothes by Tomo comes to a state near you. Um, Facts. And the music is just going to keep coming out, coming out, coming out. Just going with it. Yeah. What would you say your main focus is this year? Out of all the different things you do, what do you focus on the most? I feel like clothes and music is kind of equal right now. They're like up there. I feel like those two things, yeah. Fire. Facts, yeah. Fire. You got anything else you want to say before we cut the cameras off? Um. Thank you, Bass God. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shout out Bass God. You feel me? Thank you, Bass God. Bass God. Yeah. I don't feel like you're not the first person to say that. If I'm not, whoever else said it, the base, you feel me? And shop at closebytomo.com. You already know what's up. Do whatever, don't. Y'all said that. I got to, bro, I'm going to go back and look at these later. Somebody said that shit. Y'all know the drill, though. Follow Facts. Tomo. Follow Bad for the Community. Follow Facts. Close by Tomo. Facts. Mr. Three Accounts. And, yeah, tune in to next Facts. week's episode. Make sure to book a studio session if you need studio time because I need to start Facts. remembering to say this shit. But yeah, I do not know who next week's episode is. Yeah, shout out Trendy too. Shout out my nigga Trendy. (laughs) Shout out Trendy, bro. Shout out Trendy. Purple World, it's been good. Peace out. I ain't playing my own money. Ain't no time to chill. You ain't talking about a hundred. I ain't staying up for nothing. Every day I wake up, God bless me.